Here I'm going to show you that the uh, metric tensor uh, can be used to raise and lower indices. Now, what does that mean? Well, uh, let's watch a trick here. Take a contravariant vector, A with the super you know, script I, and the contravariant vector transforms like this, where the primes are on top, like this, and you have the I, I, and then the J, J here, and construct um, in the prime frame, I'm going to construct a new, a new uh, I, entity or something, you know, I don't know what it is yet. So I'm going to say a prime of K, so I don't know where to put that index. And it's going to be uh, found by taking the G prime KI and summing with the I here with the components of the A prime coordinates there. So if we do this, uh, let's just look at this for a second. Uh, the A prime I transforms like a contravariant vector. So I simply have the formula here. And the G prime KI transforms like a second rank covariant tensor. So I simply wrote the definitions there. And then I'm going to substitute the primes, these two, into the above. And when I do that, I get something that looks a little lengthy there because I have these three pieces here and two pieces from the left. But if I regroup things here, watch what happens. If I regroup things, uh, I have here the derivative of x, the n component here, with respect to the prime coordinate with the k. But if I then group these two inner ones here, this would be the M and the uh, uh, I there. And then this is, the, uh, this is an I and the J. Now look what happens here. This is a chain rule. The chain rule is saying, if you take this derivative and you're summing here, that you're going to find that this is going to get you, this is going to get you the derivative of X M coordinate with the derivative of xj coordinate. But wait a minute, uh, these coordinates are independent, which means that's only going to be uh, a 1 when m equals j. And when m doesn't equal j, it'll be 0, because that would be like saying the derivative of x with respect to z or something. You know, And in the general space, the uh, coordinates are independent of each other. So the term in bracket is simply delta mj. So delta mj means uh, the m and j must be the same to get things to work. See? Um, so uh, doing that, uh, the M and the J, here is the M and the J, delta MJ. We simply rewrite everything over again. We're going to uh, force here the M and the J to be the same. So the G and N becomes G and J. See? And J. And then you can... Uh, uh, leave everything else alone, you're basically taking uh, the the M and making it a J, and then you, you can leave the J alone. All right, so then when you get that, you have, you look at all these uh, here, and remember, you have to be writing this out. I'm just giving you a brief overview of the calculation, uh, sort of a general guide. We need to re write out all this stuff to see the detail. And when you do this, you see that this uh, new entity, which I constructed, has a transformation property that goes with a covariant because the prime is on the bottom here. See, it's covariant. This is covariant vector. So with this covariant vector, what I have done is I have taken a contravariant vector, A super J, and by multiplying it with the GIJs and summing it over the J, you can think of this as like using this as a matrix and multiplying uh, the vector with the matrix. Uh, column, uh, uh, say, vector there, uh, you get the covariant form of that vector. So this is a very deep, the idea of forming a covariant vector from its contravariant counterpart. So here, it's safe to leave it in this notation where you can see the subscript refers to covariant and the superscript is the contravariant. So if I let the uh, the inverse of gij be uh, g minus one here, superscript ij, so that when you take these two, multiply them together, you get 
the identity, you can think of this as two matrices where when you multiply the matrix, you basically have this kind of a rule where you have the row column, the column, uh, the row, the row column, and these are row column. What you're doing is you're summing the column here of the first one against the uh, the row of the second one. So if you get a chance to review uh, matrices, uh, it's it's helpful. It can help. Uh, but not necessary because we do have this equation here and we're all set. What we're basically showing you here is that you can do the opposite of lowering an index. You can raise an index. So by this multiplication, I am raising the index so that I, I transform a covariant vector into a contravariant one. Uh, this uh, takes some time to seep into one's mind. Uh, one of my teachers told me that, Dr. K, from my hometown, Camden, New Jersey. So be patient with yourself. Writing this out is the only way to really learn what's going on. And here, doing the homework problems. Show that this uh, AIJ is a covariant tensor of rank 2 by using a contravariant tensor of rank 2. and doing the double lowering of each index using our rules for lowering indices. All right. Good luck. Spend some time writing this out and thinking about it and taking your time because you cannot get this from a quick um, tutorial without writing everything out. Good luck.